Oh, sounds like that thing had too many baked beans last night. Uh, well, dumb jokes aside, hello everyone, and welcome back to Train Simulator, where today we're taking the we're taking the the legendary Pennsylvania Railroad GG1 for a spin. Yes, I only this is actually quite an old add-on, but I only got it like a week or so ago. It's meant to, I think it's meant to be an add-on for the well by now ancient. Uh, New York to Philadelphia route and there's barely any scenarios for it on the Steam Workshop and let alone any that are less than 40 minutes so what I've done is I've gone and taken an existing scenario and sw just swapped out an Amtrak AEM7 for the GG1 and some P70 coaches now you might have noticed the number on this engine which is of course 4876 and that's not to be confused with the New Zealand Railways DC locomotive of the same number no 4876 was the GG1 that rather famously fell through the floor or fell through the concourse floor in, uh, in Washington Union Station in, 19, in early 1953 and uh, incredibly the real 4876 is preserved she, is, I believe she's at the, what is it, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum. Anyway, let's get this thing moving. As you might have been able to guess, we are currently at New York Penn Station, and we're just taking this engine for a very short run down the Northeast Corridor, and only going about 15 miles to Elizabeth, stopping at Newark Penn on the way. Just like in the Long Island Railroad pack in Train Sim World, the station's unrealistically quiet here in Train Simulator. Although, to make it in, in, a, in, in an effort to make it somewhat, di somewhat a little bit more interesting, I've gone and put a couple of New Jersey Transit concerts in. They just pulled it. That woman just put did a Harry Potter. And of course, this locomotive, by the way, is the Bombardier ALP 45DP. And if I remember, I'll put a link in the top right corner to a video in which I actually do drive this thing. The, by the way, the horn, the horn on the ALP 45DP is absolutely phenomenal. Right. Now I know basically nothing about Penn Station in real life, so wait a minute. Is this supposed to be West Side Yard? Because I remember on the uh, Long Island Railroad route that the, or in TSW that past uh, Penn Station, in this couple of AEM sevens, past Penn Station, there's meant to be some like big sidings, unless uh, I'm I'm completely lost because I'm I could have sworn that. Uh, Wait, why is it feeling so bad all of a sudden? Yeah, I could have sworn that on the Long Island Railroad route they do have a re it does have a rendition of uh, West Side Yard. And yeah, I'm very confused as to why uh, the yard, not the, the uh, why on this route the yard west of Penn Station is so tiny. But. If anything, it's just as tiny as the... Excuse me. If anything, it's just as tiny as the yard in... Um, or as the LARR route as a whole. Now, um... I really don't know what to make of this cab interior. I mean, I realise it's pro it's obviously prototypical, but at the same time, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, anyone could have driven the GG1 considering how limited the visibility is even when you put the lights on it's not that much difference mind you, we're out, mind you we are in the uh, Hudson River tunnels at this point because on the other side of Penn Station you go through the East River tunnels and then you end up in Sunnyside, Queens where there's a big Amtrak yard and the Long Island Railroad Station at Hunters Point Avenue 
Speaking of which, um, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, even though we've got an LARR route in TSW, there has never been any official uh, LARR content in Train Simulator. Yeah, I just find that incredibly strange. Especially considering that, obviously in real life, Penn Station is indeed served by the LIRR. Although I think, from what I remember, this this really this old New York to Philadelphia route uh, does not have any kind of third rail detail for the side of Penn Station that I think would be served by the LIRR in real life. The other thing I remember is that the section, the section from New York Penn Station to Railway, uh, was completely overhauled and included in the North Jersey Coastline, which is a route that's actually now quite a few years old, but looks a damn sight better than the, than this ancient, what I'm basically calling ancient NEC route. If anything, I'm pretty sure it dates back to like 2011, which I think was around when the GG1 was brought out as well. Obviously the real GG1 was a design that uh, dates back to the 1930s. Which is quite impressive, which is quite remarkable considering that, from what I understand, they lasted in service long enough to be, in, for some of them to be inherited by Amtrak, who kept using them as late as, uh, I think as late as 1984. And I think one of the GG1s that survived into Amtrak days might have been 4876 but uh, don't quote me on that I it probably goes without saying but I barely know anything about the GG1s let alone the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad heck I, I know more about uh, Norfolk Southern's Pennsylvania Railroad Heritage Unit than the Pensy itself Speaking of which, I've just remembered that you can, there is a pack where you can get the Norfolk Southern uh, ES44AC Heritage Units, which I have got on my, have had on my Steam wish list for ages, but for whatever reason, I've never gotten around to getting it. Just looking at the New York skyline, or at least what little I can see of the skyline. Um, yeah, I'm guessing. I'm guessing this route is set post 2001. I mean, I remember th when I was look, like when I was playing World of Subways 4 and looking back, like heading out from Times Square and back towards Flushing Main Street. You look back at the New York skyline and you can see that the uh, the North and South Tower of the World Trade Center is still there. But well, yeah, because that game is set, I think, in the late 1970s. strange signals that uh, I find I always find incredibly hard to read. In fact, um, these signals and them being so difficult to notice was pretty much the main reason why there was one, uh, there was one New Jersey Transit scenario that I could never complete because I would always overrun or, or, or would always go past a red signal without realizing it and I didn't realize until too late that um, when, well, ended up either derailing on the main line or throwing the switch or forcing the switch open and, and crashing into another train. This station is, of course, uh, Secaucus Junction. And there's some, I believe there's some low level platforms here, as indeed there are. Now, I'm pretty sure these are for, I think it's the uh, Port Jervis line. Or one of the routes off of Hoboken that, you, that I think is meant to be a New Jersey Transit service, but uses locomotives painted in the colours of the Metro North Railroad. One thing's for sure is that it should not have overhead wires, because, I, because in real life the low-level platforms at Secaucus Junction are on lines that are diesel only, whereas of course the Northeast Corridor has been electrified for a very long time, or at least the section south of New Haven has, because of course it wasn't until 
it wasn't until about 2000, I think, when uh, the electrification between New Haven and Boston was was finally was finally put, installed. Hello, there's an AEM7. Wait, that's not moving. Strange. Unless there's like a glitch with AI or something. Yeah, so the GG1s, the, I'm pretty sure these could do 100, 100, at least 100 miles an hour. Was, although, no, I remember I heard that in the, when Amtrak was initially trying to get the Bud Metro liners going, uh, that, that those EMUs were proving so unreliable that I think some GG1s had to be drafted in to help out, and I think those engines were re-geared so that they could go at a higher top speed, which was surprising considering their age, because I think by that point they would have been about at least 40 years old. I think, I think it probably goes without saying, but I, re I think these GG1s are one of the most iconic locomotives, certainly not just from the Pennsylvania Railroad, but also uh, the United States as a whole. And I think another, I think two other incredibly iconic, lo incredibly world, or like that, uh, two other world famous locomotives from the Pennsylvania Railroad, I think would be the, perhaps the, uh, obviously the K4 Pacific, and uh, what, el what else could be very iconic? design. Perhaps the uh, it, perhaps the S1. You know that strange that really ma that massive 6446 duplex engine that was built in 1939. Uh, I must admit I'm not sure what to make of these uh, the brakes on this GG1. Actually, that's the point. Um, if anyone from like the New York area is, or like New Jersey area is watching, and um, what lines, where should I be looking to find the, the sort of area where the the path tracks are? Of course, the path is it's the I think it's Port it's what is it Port Authority Trains Hudson. It's like a subway line. I think it's a yeah yeah it's a subway line running from. I think the World Trade Center to uh, Newark Penn. So it's it's probably the only, inter for all I know, it's probably the only interstate subway line in the U.S. Or certainly, um, oh yeah, there's a path there's a path station. But I don't know that one's name, of course. Actually, that's a point. Does this thing have a bell? It does. Although this. That bell does not sound authentic in the slightest. If anything, it sounds like they've nicked it from the sound set of a diesel. Like a, a diesel that's 40 years younger than the GG1. The horn, at the very least, is accurate, as far as I can tell. Unfortunately, it's one of those annoying cases where, it, instead of staying on, instead of like being a dynamic horn, it, uh, whenever you press the spacebar, it just plays that one really long recording, and you can't control how long it, it's, and you can't control how long it goes on for. Surely Newark, surely Newark Pen isn't this dingy in real life. I mean, I've, from what I saw with the, uh, from what I saw with the um, uh, North Jersey coastline and how it was redone for that, um, and how the station was redone for the NJCL, it looked to me like it was much brighter. And also, that AEM7, whose picture I just took, number 938, correct me if I'm wrong, but I swear that's one of the AEM7s that, uh, that have ended up with Caltrain, along with 943. Or well, were those the ones that ran the uh, farewell tour in 2016? Or however long ago that excursion was, I don't remember exactly. Um, was the other, I think, in my opinion, the other really notable AEM7s are, number, are numbers 900 and 903. Although, 
albeit for the wrong reasons, because those were the engines involved in that in that nasty uh, in that nasty head-to-tail collision with three Conrail B36-7s in January 1987. Unfortunately, those engines were uh, written off and scrapped. In other words, the, the that accident didn't just kill 16 people, but it also it, it also killed uh, it also killed at least three locomotives and a few coaches. One of the Conrail engines was also written off. You know, the AE, the rest of the AEM sevens kept running for at least another 30 years after that after that nasty accident. And of course, they've since been replaced by the ACS-64, which gives me an idea. I don't know if I'll actually go through with it, but I've just thought to possibly make a video where I essentially do the evolution, do like an evolution of top of like the classic Northeast Corridor motive power or like electric motive power, because it, it would range from like the obviously the GG1 here to to obviously the ACS-64 of today, and I think for that I probably, all I can think of to feature now that, now that I think about it, would actually probably just be GG1's uh, AEM-7s, if I can find a Phase 3 reskin for, for that engine, uh, then the ACS-64, oh no, HHP-8s, a Sellers, and ACS-64s. Um, obviously, I I know about the General Electric E60s, but I yeah, as far as I know, no one's ever made an E60 for train simulator. I don't think, but might need to find some, might need to find a different livery for the GG1 because I know for an absolute fact that even in Pincy days, they carried more liveries than just Brunswick Green. And actually, that's the other thing. Uh, this looks like black and for the longest time I thought it was black but no apparently it is uh, Brunswick green but th of course the shade of green is so dark that you can barely tell that it's actually meant to be green although I think uh, the green is more notable on the diesels that come with the horseshoe curve roads so that would be, that would be the EMD F7A, F7B and uh, GP7 now I don't know about you, but to me that is just such an unbelievably strange horn. Mind you, um, in New Zealand I think our diesels have, I think a lot of them have, like, a lot of the older ones, I think they have like Leslie RS2 or RS3 horns. Not out. We don't have any Alco RS2s or RS3s, mind. Hello, they're coming up on Newark International Airport, or the station at least. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so while most of that, most of New Zealand's older diesels have, they largely just have uh, the like Leslie RS2 and RS3 horns. The newer DLs have these really strange, high-pitched horns that I think. Well, I was told that they're apparently electric horns instead of old-fashioned air horns. Although, for, just for a laugh, I wouldn't mind, <laughs> wouldn't mind hearing a DL modified with an air whistle, like what they have on the London Underground trains. Or heck, Nick pinch a horn off a GG1. Or any other engine that, basically any other engine that, regard, either way, it would not suit a DL. And that would be the funny part. But now, I, I mean, I know the GG1s are a very old design, but at the same time I'm still just not used to horns that sound like this. Actually, I've just realised, um, wasn't 4876 in this Brunswick Green livery when she had that uh, rather silly accident in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, at least that's what I've seen in the photographs. It was either that or Tuscan Red. Because I think in later life, Am uh, the GG1s ended up in basic Penn Central colours, and of course some of them got were painted in Amtrak colours as well. Actually, now that I think about it, I saw a 
like a livery on Steam Marketplace for the for this engine that depicts oh, what was it? Um, it was some kind of silver livery with the PNC crest on it or the PNC keystone on it. Yeah, good luck trying. Good luck still trying to see through that when you're in the rain. All right, we're coming up on Elizabeth, which is the station where we meet the Queen, as well as our last station for this run. Personally, I would have preferred to go at least as far as Trenton, if not all the way to Philadelphia. But uh, I suppose this is better than nothing. Besides, though. Uh, also, I've got some other work, other work to get on with today, so I thought I might as well just do a shorter run. I think after this, I'll do something on Marias Pass, which is actually another classic US route and train simulator. Bit strange that all the AEM sevens that we've seen so far have not been moving, and yeah, I don't really understand what that's about unless me messing around in the scenario editor somehow buggered the AI. I mean, yeah, I just remember, I have driven the AE, or recorded at least two journeys with the AEM7 before, even though that was before I started doing commentary. I think in the end card, I will still, I think I'm, if I remember, I'll put up a, video, a link to one of the AEM7 videos I've done. But, uh, yeah, now that we've now that we've arrived at Elizabeth, I think I will go ahead and end the video there. And yeah, for now I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you have enjoyed this run with the GG1, and that you'll stick around for more videos like this coming soon, or whenever I can make them, or whenever I can get around to making them rather. And uh, yeah. Uh, Feel free to let me know if you whether or not you like the GG1, be it the train simulator version or the real thing. Yeah, so until next time, thank you for watching. Also, there should be a letter N in there.